So now I want to talk about some of the current challenges we face in the market. So there's obviously a lot, a lot of different ones, but I think the main ones in terms of what we're all globally facing are things like pollution and livability. So that's, I think, a, a massive one in terms of just smog. We all know the pictures from the Asian cities, but we even have it here. You know, it's not just about the, the smog in the air and uh, the cities being planned for cars mainly, especially here in Australia. You know, if I look back into the times in Denmark, we've taken a bicycle everywhere. But in here, um, it's really everything is designed for cars. I was shocked sometimes that there are not even pedestrian walkways existing somewhere or they stop in the middle of the road and then they just don't continue. So it's a bit of a shocker. So we're working on this and hopefully um, can design cities which are a bit more clean to the degree that they can actually be used by humans rather by cars. And waste plays into that as, as one part of solution. So waste as in, um, yeah, all the bottles, plastics, those kinds of things being everywhere, you know, and, uh, but also the, one of the latest things is the electrical waste or how they call, or what they call the e-waste. So I think that's another uh, big waste factor to focus on because nowadays, I don't know if most guys know, but I've seen it in Africa because this is where all our old computers, mobile phones and things end up. And I've seen massive piles of that as in hills really at the beaches and it doesn't stop with the e-waste it's also cars and basically everything we don't need anymore in the, in the first world gets dumped there and i think it's massive hazard obviously so waste is a big one and then obviously severe weather as well so we all realize it's there it's getting worse um there's more floods more regular we can see it here in australia we can see it here in brisbane well, I'm based, um, yeah, we only had one about f four or five years ago, the last one. And it's just a constant threat. And it's, yeah, the, cyc the cycles are getting more narrow with it. It happens more often. So you see one example here uh, from, from America in Houston. Uh, along those lines, obviously, is the, the drought and heat waves as well. So one part has maybe too much water and the other ones they have too little. And they're suffering really uh, severe conditions there. As in, um, people die, thousands of them, like they did in India a few years ago with that stuff. And it's also happening more frequently. So that's, that's a big, big issue we need to address in terms of how do we deal with our wastewater, with our water and recycling this and, and you know, how do we use this in buildings? Do we have self-sufficient buildings? What I think should happen most of the times, as good as possible, recycling the waters and things like that. So and then also, of course, the food and fresh water as a, as a separate topic. So food production, I mean, I've seen things like this as a starting point in certain communities where you grow your own food at home but it's still not to the extent where we need it with a growing population and also the loss of fertile land due to climate change or other weather conditions. So we need to really react fast and getting this integrated back into our culture. And another, another side story to this from East Germany, like where we had, and it's so funny because we, we had this in East Germany, every school had a school garden attached to the school. So in every class, had a couple of hours every week to take care of their individual parts and it changed over the years so you didn't do the same every year but whatever we harvested actually went into the school kitchen was produced they made food for us and we didn't even have to pay for any of that so it was a win-win situation but when the war came down they took the idea away and now they're discussing bringing that stuff back but i just think you know, it's such a smart and simple idea and we could use this not just in schools but in every building, basically, every apartment block should have a dedicated food grow area yeah, for community, for whatever. And it starts with little community gardens here and there, but it's still not to the extent where we really need it. I think this, this is something we should focus on a little bit more. Rising of sea levels, obviously, that's one of the topics which is in, in the media a lot, so people are aware of it. What people are not aware of it with that topic is also the human involvement with this so the sea level rises but that means that some islands will disappear and especially the islands closer to australia uh, 
there's a, f a few of them already being in danger and um, what will what's related to this is um, what they call climate refugees so people actually have to move countries because their land just simply disappears so how do we deal with this in the future how do we integrate those people in terms of communities cultures preserving their traditions also even if they come to another country so integrating this into the city environments that's that's another point to discuss for us and another challenge to solve and that brings us to the human consequences as a general so we're not just talking about climate refugees we're also talking about um, just uh, people they lose their homes due to weather due to drought they have to move countries what you see in Europe at the moment with the refugees you know settling over from Syria I mean there's more and more coming the guys from Africa trying to make a better life so there's a there's a lot of stuff on on that level happening and cities transport architecture everything has to react to this in order to conquer this in order to you know solve the challenges but the big question is how do we deal with this at the moment so we're dealing with this as you can see here in this in the slide the same old same old i'll just show you an example of an aerial shot here from the Gold Coast. You see in the left corner that's a typical development from I think around the 60s. And then the other one there is what they call you now gated communities or their new you know dream home developments. So you see the 60s obviously there's sometimes not even fences, you have a lot of green there. And what we build now, I call them artificial paradises or gated communities, or you might refer to this as the next ghettos. Because um there's almost no more green. Look, you don't even have a backyard anymore. You're basically looking into your neighbor's uh, kitchen window from your living room window. There is no space, there's no sense. And all you can see, which is really shocking for me, is uh, a big entry door and a garage door. So you don't even interact with your neighbors. You might not even know them properly because they you know, have an automatic remote control to drive their car into the, to the garage. And that's all you see from them. And then the door closes and that's it. So, and I think this is the wrong approach of solving the issues we've seen before. So that's getting actually away from all the community stuff and getting away from mixing, mixing cultures and things like that. So, and obviously there's also no space for growing your own veggies. How are you going to do this in an environment like this where everything is concrete? So I don't think this is a, a good way forward, but that's what's currently happening here um, in Australia at least or in other parts of the world and big scale and it's definitely not solving our problems it's actually achieving the opposite and in terms of um, that was residential development in terms of commercial development urban development I have to go with a really famous uh, word used by the architect Jan Gale from Denmark I call it Birchett architecture um, and that refers to the fact that it's just dropped from the sky. So without really doing any planning in between, they just drop towers. And you can look, you look at Brisbane, you look at Hong Kong, you name it. It's always the same. So the cities look more and more the same. It's just a few towers here and there. But what happens in between the towers on eye level, walking speed, what's happening there in the cities, in the community? As I said before, it's planned for cars. It's not planned for humans. So Jan Gale refers to this as Birchett architecture, and you can see it here, this example in the Gold Coast is exactly the same. And can you imagine what's going to happen here if the sea level rises, even just a little bit? We're talking about erosion, we're talking about the towers falling into the water. So it's not a really smart way of planning either. Plus, it's not really giving you any quality of life. So, and then uh, the quote I used here, I think, sums up our current situation the most. So, what I think is the biggest pity in the entire building industry is that we're actually planning for profit rather than we plan for people. And everyone is just interested in making a quick buck. But we should start rather building homes than investment properties.